Uh, hi to all of you. So uh, I will present to you a very quick overview of what is quasi Bayesian learning. Uh, just to fix notation, here is the, uh, my, my very own view of uh, a very um, minimalistic uh, description of prediction. So let's assume that we collect data, and what you want to do is perform predictions. So let's say you collect some x's and you want to predict the corresponding y's. So these tasks uh, amounts to finding a good functional object, so I shall call this a phi hat. And this phi hat should, when provided with an x, give a good approximation of the y. So what is good exactly? Uh, well, you would typically define a last function, and then you would look, as we've seen in many other talks today, then you would look at the risk, which is the expectation of this loss with respect to the unknown distribution of the data and the empirical counterpart. So that's it. So what is quasi-Bayesian? Let me try to convince you that it's an interesting uh, way of performing learning. So as in Bayesian, classical Bayesian learning, should I say, you would start with a prior. So you would typically use a set of candidate predictors, so candidate functionals. This set is calligraphic F, and this set could be parameterized uh, with some distribution. We could call this a prior to be consistent with Bayesian learning, but it's really just a distribution which allows you to sample efficiently this, this space. Then you would typically set a learning rate, so lambda, this learning rate should be calibrated, for example, with cross-validation and so on, but I will not dig into details. And the core of uh, quasi-Bayesian learning is really this object, which we call the quasi-posterior. It's a quasi-posterior because it does not correspond to any likelihood. So a quasi-posterior, just this distribution, which is the prior times the term, which will exponentially penalize the fit to your data. So it's a very natural idea. And then from this quasi-posterior, it's also known as the Gibbs posterior. Some of, the, some of you might know this under this alias. You would typically form different predictors, which could be, for example, the maximum a posteriori, the map, or should I say the maximum a quasi posteriori, because we have, no, we, we have no proper posterior. You could also look at this uh, quantity, which is the mean, so the, uh, the uh, expectation of, of this distribution. You could also look at distribution, uh, at, um, pro, sorry, uh, random realization of this distribution and so on and so on. The crux is that the central object is just this quasi-posterior and then you could derive a lot of results on uh, estimators which are obtained through this quasi-posterior. So this is really quasi-Bayesian learning in a nutshell. And then the uh, story gets interesting when you want to, when you want to prove theoretical results on such estimators. So the two pillars of quasi-Bayesian learning are really first obtaining pack generalization bounds. So uh, the, the vocabulary here is really simple because pack Bayesian learning is just quasi-Bayesian learning and pack bounds, right? So it really makes, uh, it, it really is a, an easy uh, combination. If you're able to obtain pack generalization bounds on Bayesian flavored or quasi-Bayesian flavored estimators, you're doing pack Bayesian learning. And the other parts, uh, so how do these connect with the real world typically? Uh, well, you would, for example, resort to implementations with transdimensional MCMC, stochastic optimization, such as stochastic gradient descent. Uh, you, could you could also look at uh, block coordinate descent in, in some settings. You could also look to variational base. So this literature has been really developed uh, for almost 20 years now. It's been pioneered in the, in the late 90s uh, by, uh, for example, Schotter and Williamson, McAllister, Olivier Catoni, and many other people. So the idea is really to enforce your fit to the data, adapting to a prior knowledge of your problem. So you guys are forbidden to ask questions, mostly, but <laughs> if you want to dig into uh, quasi-Bayesian learning, we should definitely have a talk. Uh, you could either be interested in transposing quasi-Bayesian learning to a different set of situations. So those are my latest contribution to quasi-Bayesian learning. Uh, you could be interested in NMF, ranking, sparse regression, and so on. Uh, or you could easily try to adapt quasi-Bayesian learning to your own specific problem. For this, you only need three ingredients to use the recipe. You should be able to define a prior, a learning rate, and a loss function which is adapted to your problem. And then you could totally go uh, quasi-Bayesian. 
So if you're interested you, and, and if you're interning NIPS, you're also very welcome to join to our workshop, which is 50 Shades of Bayesian Learning. So there really is two shades, right? Bayesian, Pac Bayesian. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we're going to explore the connection between classical Bayesian and Pac Bayesian. So feel free to attend and to, to broadcast the workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you.